Welcome back to the quarry garden and I've just started the big task of weeding these two big spring borders. They're pretty much put to bed now, the plants are nearly all dormant apart from the shrubs, what's left of these lovely foxgloves that have been fabulous this year. Oh, a very strange bug on this, um, on this leaf. <laughs> Anyhow, and I'm cleaning up, removing all of the weeds. We had a big problem this year with a particular type of weed, which has smothered all of the, um, the shrubs. Don't know what it is. I've seen it many times before, but it's this, it's kind of like sticks to everything, this big long weed, and it's grown over all of the shrubs in this front of this border. So I need to take it all out. And there's many more weeds in here. So I need to finish off edging the path down in front of this border, remove all of these weeds. Then I can actually see what I've got. And I've got some ferns and some grasses to plant. But just want to mention these lovely lime marmalade hookers at the beginning, or rather the front of the border. I added those last September or October time. And it was a bit of a gamble. Wasn't sure whether they would work here in this very dark, because it's quite deep shade here dark very dry position but they've actually flourished they've done really well and been in flower now for a good good i would say three weeks three to four weeks so they're a success so let me remove all of these weeds and then let's see where we're at and i'll show you the ferns and the grasses that i've got to add
So it's a few days later and that's because of the rain. We had real heavy rain last night, but it has actually perked everything up, including all of these ferns, which it was really dry before that. But I have managed to clear most of this spring border, this first big one. Still have an awful lot to um, remove amongst all of the shrubs behind me here. A lot of grass growing in for the first time ever, so I need to take care of that. But the ground here, I'm not going to actually add anything here. I'm just going to let the ferns um, seed around because underneath all of this ground are um, spring bulbs and I don't really want to disturb them. And you can't actually see this part of the border this time of year. Um, it's well hidden away because you're right in the depth of it. So I don't intend to do much here, but around this tree, and I started this area a year ago, I'm going to add some of the hellebore seedlings that I take every year. And I've got quite a few. This is one of the bigger ones. Now these, I dug up, these are seedlings I dug up a year ago and potted them on. So I've got an awful lot of them. Don't know what colour they are, but it doesn't really matter in the scheme of things because the spring border is full of all colours. I haven't um, limited it to any particular colour. So I'm going to add these around this tree section here. But what I'll do next is, let me show you the front of the border that I've cleared and I'll show you the plants that I'm going to add today. So the idea to um, extend these borders, these spring borders into summer shade borders all came about because we lost a tree which was round about this position. Now it was a, a very old silver birch. I was quite sad to lose it at the time, came down in a storm, but what it did do is it provided me with the opportunity to extend this border by at least 10 to 15 feet and create a shade border for the summer. Now that's something I haven't had before because originally these were just spring borders that I let die back and um, I left them until the following year and nothing actually happened. So when you walk past, they were very dull and I wanted to change that. So I actually dug the grass out. Last year I added the hookeras around the front. This is lime marmalade and they did so well. I added a couple of Lakotho shrubs and they're doing okay too. They're very small for now. And then I, I, I relocated quite a few of these rhododendrons. I dug them up from elsewhere in the borders and moved them here just to give a little bit of height um, to the front of the border. I didn't want all the height to be way over there in the back. But now this time I'm going to add some purple shrubs, which I think will contrast really well with this lime color from the hookeras. And the first one that I've got to add in this is a stilby. So this is the lovely array of purple plants that I've got to add to the spring borders, which will now be called a shade garden in the summer. And I've gone for this theme to contrast with the lime marmalade of the hookeras. Now the first one, as I mentioned, is an astilbe, and this one is delft lace. It's got gorgeous, very dark plum colour um, leaves with a, a pinky showy flower. And then I have a catinus. Again, with those, the plum colours, I think you can see the theme going here, and that should be stunning. Now, those two do require a little bit more sunshine, a couple of hours per day, I would say, to keep that lovely dark plum colour leaves. So they will be added nearer the front of this border, which does now receive more sunshine because we've lost that silver birch tree. So they should do good. And the last one in the purple theme is this hookera. And this one is obsidian. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, very dark plum leaves with a, a pinkish white flower. So I think they should all gel together quite nicely. So the first shrub that I'm going to add is this Catinus. And for all of the plants I'm going to add today, I'll put all of the details in the description of the video. Just because there's quite a few different ones that'll take some time to talk through them all. But I've removed quite a bit of stone. I've been quite fortunate that it rained heavy last night, so it has loosened everything up. But I can feel a very large stone in here, which will have to come out to make the planting pocket for this. Whoa, and you can actually see there's a self-seeded grass on the top, which I'm going to lose, but this is what I have to do every time. I want to plant anything and if I'm lucky I can actually get a really nice piece of sandstone like this one to use, to use elsewhere in the garden it's quite heavy most of the time it'll come out in very small chunks like that it's very easy to remove I actually do remove it all just with forks 
or a spade. I don't actually have to use anything else. And it's quite easy to make a large planting hole. So let me continue with this. I plant the cotinus. And for anyone interested, do I use any, any amendments to the soil? Yes and no. Because this is quite impoverished soil, because it's mainly all stone, I will add some soil from elsewhere in the garden, but I'll mix it with a little bit of compost. And that's all I do. I don't use amendments for everything that I plant. It's not something I actually do here, but in this instance, I will. So let me add all of these plants and I'll show you what they look like at the end. So I'm in the very back of this border where it's pretty much deep shade. I've planted all the young seedlings. That's all of the young hellebore seedlings that I've been growing for the last year. Also, I've grown some aquilegias from seed two and I've been planting those out. And then more of the hellebore young plants around the ferns. And it's starting to take shape this, although you won't see any big results until next spring. So from the very back of this um, spring border, pretty much deep shade now, to the middle in the front, which are the new sections, which will be the summer shade border. And one plant that I didn't mention last year is the opiopogium grass in the front, black mondu grass. Now I had several of those, but I split them all and they didn't do anything last year at all. And I was a bit fearful that I might lose them, but they've actually started to put on a bit of a growth spurt. So it looks like they're gonna be successful after all. Then you've got the lime marmalade hookeras, again, what I added last year. Now I'm just about to cut off all of the flower spikes because they're done now and that should allow the leaves to flush out again, new leaves, new growth. And then behind them is the new section, which is the astilbes running through the middle of this little section at the front here. And that is Delft lace. Now I love this particular astilbe and I've picked this one on purpose because of the, um, the plum colored leaves and the plum coloured stems. And I really like that. Then behind them, I have a new, two new plants that I didn't mention earlier. And this is the Macrophylia red hydrangea. And I just like the contrast with the plum leaves. Now I've grown hydrangeas before and I'm quite successful at them here in the quarry garden, as long as it, they get enough moisture. And that will be the one thing that these may struggle with here. So fingers crossed with those. Then at the back here, I've got a new um, cotinus, and I'll just get the label for that, and that is Dusky Maiden. Now it's obviously tiny here now, but this can grow into a pretty substantial shrub, anything to two to three meters height and width, but I will prune it down because I don't want it to get beyond probably about three to four feet in height and width, and it'll fill this area nicely and give that again, that lovely plum color against the pinks and the reds. And I think lastly, it is the Hacanacloa grasses, Aureola, which I have grown down in the bottom of the quarry garden in the hydrangea garden. They do seem to like the conditions here. So fingers crossed again that they will come through the winter okay. Oh, and one more, sorry. This is the heart's tongue fern, which to give it its botanical name is a, bear with me, Aspelenium. Aspelenium? Whoa, these words are hard to, hard to pronounce, but that's basically a British native, the heart's tongue fern. This one I've dug out from elsewhere in the garden because they do seed around here in my garden with it being a shaded woodland garden. I do have a lot of these to be able to move around. And I did buy two smaller ones earlier on in the week too. But I think that's everything. And I will include all of the plants in the description box, just in case I've missed any out, or you want to know a little bit more about the sizes of them. So that's one shade border down. I've got to replicate this on the other side, which is another large spring border. So I better get on with it. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.